everyone, welcome. This is Influence Colorist. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. Time for another Color This with this video, where I pick a book that is available in many types of markets, like Amazon to even local stores, and color a page with a medium that is also widely accessible and budget-friendly. Today I'll be coloring in Anamorphia by Kirby Rosans, which I purchased at a local craft and hobby store many years ago, so it definitely needs some love and attention. And I'm gonna be coloring in this big double page spread of these beautiful toucan. Okay, I'll be using Crayola markers. I have two sets, uh, the classic colors and the bright and bold or bold and bright colors. Crayola markers are definitely a favorite in my elementary art classes. Uh, I have used some of the Crayola super tips in my coloring books, but I have yet to use these broad line markers in my adult coloring books. So I hope to show you how versatile they are. I'll also be using a water brush for uh, color variations, but you can also use um, any small brush and just water too. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna start with the background and I'm going to use my favorite color from the Bold and Bright set. This one is called Sea Foam Green. This video will be a combination of regular coloring, speed coloring, and I also do coloring off camera when it gets very repetitive. But not to worry, I will always explain what I'm doing. The tip on these markers aren't the best for those really super tight spaces, but they are nice if you have a combination of medium to large areas, which this picture does. And I'm basically outlining around my shapes and then coloring in a more uniform pattern to fill up that space. All right, I think you got the idea. Time to speed this up. Okay, so that took about two and a half episodes of Seinfeld. As you can see in some of these more open spaces, you get more of the marker lines, which is normal for water-based markers and even alcohol markers. Normally, I would just go over that with color pencil to even that out, but I'm gonna show you how to camouflage that at the end using the water brush and markers. So far, I'm liking the way this looks. It kind of reminds me of wallpaper. Next, I'm pulling colors for the toucan on the right. It will have a big yellow bill. Other colors I'm using from the classic set are black, orange, and blue. Also purple, that is not um, in the box right now. <laughs> um, from the bright and bold set, I'm gonna be using hot pink, infrared, blue lagoon, and primrose. Okay, I'm gonna start with the bill and I'm just gonna outline around this shape and then coloring in one direction. I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow underneath that line that divides the upper and lower bill. And then I'm gonna put some of this just regular orange down here in the bottom half. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna take hot pink and I'm gonna run this along the yellow that's just under that line um, and a little bit above. So after playing around with these markers for many years with my students and trying to um, come up with different color combinations, uh, I found that if you have yellow and then you go hot pink over that, it makes it a lighter orange. It's harder to see on camera, but it's more of like a fluorescent orange than um, a regular orange. All right, so now I'm taking infrared and I'm just gonna darken some of these areas. So in kind of little short strokes, um, I'm going along the bottom and then just a few of the edges where I want it to be a little bit darker. All right, taking that hot pink again and making that bright orange and then a little bit of prim primrose on top of that. Okay, now for this part of the bill, this is going to be black, but I want a little bit of blue highlights. So I'm starting off with that blue lagoon, adding a patch of color where I want that highlight and then um, making kind of black streaks around that so it doesn't completely cover it. And the black part of the eye will be black and then um, adding some blue around the iris part. All right, so same thing. This part is going to be orange, but I want a brighter orange at the top as a highlight. So I'm doing that yellow and then hot pink and then regular orange at the bottom and then adding a little bit of infrared in the corners and around the edges. And looking at pictures of toucans on the internet, I see that they have kind of these stripes along the beak. So I want it, this line to be kind of messy. So I'm just kind of with a very like jagged, like jittery hand, um, making kind of a messy line. And now for the watercolor. So I'm using hot pink and this infrared. So first I'm gonna start with hot pink and again, I'm kind of just dotting, making kind of a messy line, not too clean or straight. And that kind of puts the base down and then I'll use the infrared to just darken it just a little bit. I'm dragging that line down a little bit below that uh, black line too. So starting with that hot pink, it, again, because it's going on the yellow, will turn orange, but a more subtle orange with the, the watercolor. Um, and then so it kind of creates a, a light and dark value. In my photos of toucans, the main body is black, but I don't want black, so I'm using the next dark color, which is purple. Now, I already know that there will be some marker lines, so I'm using that to my advantage to create that feather texture. This light blue is Blue Lagoon, and it's actually gonna act as my highlight color, um, but it's also gonna be a mid-tone to dark for the purple. So I'm starting with the Blue Lagoon, and I'm just locating where I want some darker patches to be, and making it streaky along the more open space. Inside the smaller feather feathers, I'm creating more uniform lines. So now I can take my purple and go right over those blue lines. Um, you don't see it as much now, but when this dries, um, you can see some of that blue coming through on the back. So for the highlight areas, I'm trying to remember not to color the very tip of those feathers, leaving that light blue open, and so it gives it a little bit more of a highlight. So the highs of the purple will also be ones that the area that the blue is not underneath. So this gives you more values of highs and lows with one color. All right, and then I'm taking regular blue and I'm just adding some of this in like the underneath part, the shadow of those feathers. And the, the blue will give you an even darker um, shadow area or low.
All right, so here is the main part of the body of the bird done. And now I'm gonna work on this little patch and I'm going to use um, the watercolor technique. So this time I'm taking Primrose and first I'm gonna do the, the shadow part. So just going over the lines that already exist. Okay, and now I'm just gonna scribble it on my ceramic plate and use the water brush. Oh, I think I'll also use some blue in here too. So yeah, using the water brush, I'm gonna pick up some of that color and then just apply it to the page. And again, this just creates a different value for the color. All right, this area is supposed to be white, but I'm gonna add some shadows with the light blue and then a little bit of yellow just up at the top. Okay, let's look at the second toucan. I'll bring up a picture. So as you can see, the bill or the beak in this one is a lot more colorful. So more colors for that one and then the neck and like breast area is very yellow feathers are still black so i'm going to use that purple color again and then little hints of red feathers here and there all right i'm going to start off with the yellow and the same thing i'm just going to outline around the shape and then fill in in one direction going over some of these shadows shadow areas just a little bit more and then i'm going to add this electric lime up here around the eye and some regular green on the iris part fill in the pupil with black and then same thing that I did on the other one mostly black on some of these and then just a blue highlight okay so for the bill I want a couple different shades of orange so I'm going to do that yellow um, and then the hot pink over that will be my lighter shade and then a regular orange throughout most of this so outlining coloring in one direction using that nice broad tip of the marker and just blend that in a little bit more with that hot pink and then going in with infrared just to darken up some of the um, edge areas the tip of the beak is going to be primrose with a little bit of infrared. Okay, there's a little bit of blue, so I'm going to use the Blue Lagoon. Um, actually, that might be the battery charge blue, which is just a little bit brighter than Blue Lagoon. Electric Lime for this upper portion. And then finishing the bottom with Electric Lime. All right, his feet are gonna be bright blue. So this is the battery charge blue. And then just little tufts of red feathers around the bottom of the neck. All 
All right, his beak also has these little streaks and lines through them, so more towards the front of the beak. So I'm going to use that same watercolor technique where I'm using a green um, and then just kind of creating the base of those lines. Again, uh, not very distinct lines, kind of wider at the base, uh, and then it goes skinnier up at the top. And then I'm going to use the teal color just to darken that up a little bit. And I can also use that teal color to add shadow to the feet. All right, using that watercolor technique, I'm going to use orange and just fill in some of this um, neck area for some shadows. Using some of this line art that's already available there, just going over and creating a deeper shadow. Okay, so taking that blue lagoon now and creating those darker um, points in the feathers. So anything that the purple will go over will be darker. Um, and then I'll also leave a little tip or the bottom tip of the feathers that blue lagoon, if I, if I can remember to not color over them. Um, yeah, and then, so that will give you your highs and lows of the purple. All right, so in the picture, it showed this little tuft of red feathers. So I'm gonna use this little bottom area and add some red feathers. So starting off with just the marker and then finishing off with the watercolor of the infrared and some primrose. All right, on to the other elements of the page. So I'm gonna work on the branches here. I'm gonna use brown and I'm just gonna concentrate on the bottom and then adding some shadow parts here and there along the branch. And then I'll use the watercolor technique and that will create the highs and lows for the wood. All right, so all the branches are done, and now I'm gonna concentrate on the leaves. So all the leaves are going to have a yellow base, and I'm gonna do that in the watercolor technique. Um, I feel like the whole background can get very busy and very colorful, and I really want the birds to be the most colorful. So I think that basing everything in that uh, watered down yellow uh, will keep a very cohesive look, and then I can always add um, more greens and colors inside the leaves, but they'll still kind of maintain a more dull and watered down look. All right, so here's what it looks like with all the leaves in that yellow base. And now I can start taking some different greens. Here's some teal, some regular green, and some electric lime. And you could use all three colors, you know, on each leaf, or you can designate one green for one leaf or one particular type of leaf. 
So I'm gonna pretty much do that. Like these smaller leaves, I'm gonna add the electric lime inside, keeping some of the yellow visible. And for this leaf up here, I'm gonna use the regular green, concentrating darker along that shadow area. And then adding a little bit more water as it moves up those leaves. And then using some of that darker teal to add just a slightly different shade in, in there. All right, and then I thought it would be pretty to add just a little bit of this infrared watered down on the tips. It gives it a little bit more variation, but is still pretty mellow um, compared to the two cans. All right, the background is complete. The only thing I wasn't sure what I wanted to do were all the little doodle shapes. So I didn't really want them to stand out in any way. So what I did was just used the same seafoam green, but watered down and just did a light layer over them. That way they're the same color as the background. Um, you can still obviously see them, um, but they don't stand out quite as much. Okay, so now to camouflage that background that I talked about earlier, uh, I am just taking some darker greens. Um, I have the teal green and then I also have a regular green and I'm using my water brush and I'm just going to kind of dab that color where those little streaky bits are. Uh, that way it kind of blends in a little bit more. It's still a textured look, uh, but you don't see the marker lines quite as much. It kind of makes it look more like, you know, distant foliage in the background. At least that's what I'm hoping it looks like. All right, all done. Let me pull back so you can get a full sense of the double page spread. Um, using the Crayola markers, they are definitely bright and bold. So great colors, um, but then again, using them as the watercolor technique, you can get some lighter, more muted shades, which works well for the background. Uh, you can still see some of the marker lines, um, but hopefully that doesn't bother you too much because um, I say just use it to your advantage, especially in these areas where you have the feathers and the beaks that would already have those textured lines in there. All right, and making sure you're picking the right tools for the job is definitely something to think about. So the markers, these markers, I knew I needed some bigger areas, uh, which this page definitely had. All right, everyone, I hope this was helpful for you. And yeah, don't be afraid to get out those um, classic Crayola markers and create something beautiful. Happy coloring, everyone. I will see you next time. And if you liked this video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and I appreciate all my viewers and all my subscribers. See you next time.